Hello, I'm just going to go over a couple of quick things on making forgings, uh, specifically round forgings, uh, based off of the Boeing drawings. Um, so the question today is about this section of our overall drawing. Um, now this section right here, it's a little bit complicated, a bit hard to actually tell what's going on. Um, step one is you always want to go over here and get the drop down center line and then just draw a couple of center lines for your axes. Now I'd just like to point out that on these old um, sort of forging drawings these lines don't actually uh, you won't actually see them. Uh, same with this line it just indicates that there is a change in the geometry there um, now, specifically on this one, because of that little corner, uh, you know that they drew it by drawing a box first and then applying this radius. Um, and I believe if you do this right, uh, that radius might even have a small flat edge on it. I'm just going to work through this as I'm talking here. Um, I've got my other monitor over here and I'm looking at it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm not actually going to draw any solid lines yet. I'm just going to do all construction here. Our first defining dimension is going to be 1.81. And I haven't searched through this drawing yet, so we're going to have to find a radius uh, for this distance. Um, just looking at it, I think that's 2.6. So I'm just going to set that. And then up here, I'm actually going to make this one a solid line because we don't have to do any modification to it. The radius on that is smaller and it's going to be... This one's going to be a little bit harder to find, I think. 3.32. I think I got that radius wrong, perhaps. I'm trying to look at this. Yeah, that, that can't be the right... Oh, I got the radius. Okay, so this is a 2.6 radius. I was thinking diameter because that's usually how they dimension them. Alright. So, this is how they would have drawn it originally. Two basic lines to form a box. Um, and then we can start drawing our actual lines. And you just draw them right over the construction lines. It gives you nice snaps. And then... Again, I'm going to use my tangent arc because it gives me an automatic relation. I do that. I do the same thing up here. I know that this is a 2 radius. I know that this is a 0.25 radius. So now the question really becomes, um, you know, how do we define the up and down here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another um, arc here. I'm going to snap it onto that line. I'm going to get that the tangent uh, definition. Then I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go over here to for construction. I'm going to select that little checkbox. Now it's a construction line. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click this. I'm going to click this. I'm going to give them a co-radial definition there. So I believe that uh, when I was asked this question, they actually had it correct. Um, as you can see here, it would have originally been drawn as a radius across that box there, and then it would meet this two radius there. So that is how I would do it. And then there's also this little sort of bump on the bottom. That's not very specific. It doesn't really matter what that is. So how I'm actually going to do that is I want it to be a nice dome when I'm done. So I'm going to add another construction line over on the uh, end here. And then we're just going to make that and that tangent. So now the end of this arc is perfectly tangent so that when this revolves around, you won't have a weird point in the middle there. 
Uh, and then we can really just give this any old dimension like that. Or if we need a specific dimension, dimension to that line that we just added, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to assume that it goes 3 eighths. Uh, I'm going to round that to 0 0.38. Uh, and I'm not going to do this entire part right now. So I'm just going to uh, complete the top section there. Then we go over to Features, Revolve Boss Space. It says that it's open. Uh, you want to click yes. That just means that I haven't put a line in here. If you do put a line in there and then you select that line as your axis of rotation, uh, it can sometimes cause errors, so I try to just leave it open and let SolidWorks close the profile. And then we just have to select this line as our axis of rotation. Click check. <laughs> You'll notice that neither of these lines that show up on the outside exactly match this line right here. Uh, but as far as the forging goes, that's not terribly important. Uh, the most important thing will be looking at this part once it's machined down uh, and seeing what gets machined down and to what tolerances. Once you do that, everything should be good. Um, you can double check to see if the finished part uh, needs this radius to be up higher or down lower, and then you can go back to your forging model and you can adjust that a little bit. Because it's not extremely clear on this one, um, so you, you just sort of have to work with assumptions and think about how they would have drawn it by hand, and then try to replicate that. Uh, so I hope that was useful. Um, so that would be our forging part right there, and you can see we have a nice round on the bottom and there isn't a finite point. It doesn't look um, like it has any straight edges. Uh, that's really what we want. Um, now as I'm looking back over at the forging model, it looks like there's actually a radius on this. So you could have added a radius on that sketch and then done your lump, or you could add a fillet afterwards uh, depending on, again, what it looks like once it's machined. Now we can call that an eighth inch. I think the drawing probably specifies what that radius should be. But again, it all depends on your specific situation and what the part is used for. Uh, so I hope that helped you out a little bit. Uh, so best of luck making forgings, especially round ones. And thank you for watching.